concentrate our mind on Sri Ramakrishna so that his instructions might give us inspiration in spiritual life. Asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrityor ma mritangamaya Om Shanti 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 let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him for knowledge, devotion, so that we move onwards in our spiritual path. Unless we walk through the spiritual path, how can we reach the goal? So, the spiritual ideas must be practiced in a definite way there is the meaning of walking through spiritual path. That means we must doing practices willingly. We must not stop them for any reason. Coming to the chapel participating in the prayers, attending the class, to hear the spiritual ideas, they all form discipline. Mind gives some reason to get away from the discipline. But we lose by that way. Particularly those who follow the spiritual instructions of Sri Ramakrishna should not stop doing spiritual sadhanas for any reason. We are here to contemplate on the instructions of Sri Ramakrishna. Every word he spoke has a great spiritual significance. So, it is very important to understand these teachings in a clear way. Sri Ramakrishna visited Keshavchandra Sen. He had a long talk. After everything was over, Sri Ramakrishna was returning back to Dakshineshwar. When he was coming down from upstairs, he found the house was not properly lighted. Sri Ramakrishna makes a significant remark. He tells, the house must be well lighted. A house without light becomes stricken with poverty. This instruction, though it looks very simple from outside, 
it has got great significance from the spiritual point of view. Whatever Sri Ramakrishna has said has got immense spiritual value. Why are we not happy? Why are we suffering in this world? Why do we stumble in life again and again? Why are we facing so many problems? All these things come because of the darkness of ignorance. We are steeped in ignorance. Ignorance means darkness. Knowledge means light. Problem is compared to darkness. Remedy is compared to light. We must bring the light of knowledge to dispel the darkness of ignorance. So let us try to understand the instruction of Sri Ramakrishna in this light. Now, Sri Ramakrishna has said many times, again and again Swamiji tells, repeat divine name. Try to meditate on the divine form. Do it constantly, then awakening comes. That awakening is light. Spiritual disciplines are meant for lighting the lamp of knowledge. So it follows, we must set the mind on spiritual theme. We must set the mind, otherwise it won't sit there, it wants to run away. It wants to run away. It doesn't obey you at all. You have to follow the mind wherever it drags you, wherever it pulls you. So we must set the mind on spiritual ideas effectively by following discipline in life. When the mind gets absorbed, we see a shining light. It is the mystic vision. When we get into this experience, we feel a kind of higher and nobler joy. The mind then is reluctant to give up this joy and it moves onwards. The vision of light will be concentrated into the form of the chosen ideal and that leads to supreme bliss. The more we try to enter within, reaching the inner and inmost recesses of our heart, the greater the light we will receive. The Divine Mother, the embodiment of light is within every heart. She is within me, she is within you, she is everywhere, in everything. From the highest God in the heavens to the smallest insect on the earth. In the movable and the immovable, she is present everywhere. We must pray to her. 
we are under her realm we are in this world means we are under her realm that means we are in maya we are in her jurisdiction so that means shri ramakrishna is suggesting that in order to get mukti in order to get liberation from suffering we must worship divine mother she holds the key in her hands the realm of light will be opened unto us if she graciously unlocks the door the spiritual prosperity will be there when the light is lighted she manifests herself in a pure mind the spiritual sadhanas the disciplines they are all meant to purify the mind the light is within our self we must dive deep within and we will discover the light ordinarily <clears throat> the mind is active in the three lowest planes we should understand this very carefully all our minds generally speaking they are very active in the three lowest planes what are those three planes one is mooladhara chakra that is it is located between the origin of the reproductory organ and the anus it is concerned with the most basic instinct of all self preservation it is concerned with our animal nature it links us to nature and the soil it is concerned with survival and the fact of being it has the adrenals the fight or flight glands associated with it it also regulates the senses of taste and smell mooladhara is located at the base of the spinal column our mind is very much there that is why we find the animal nature prominent in us the second one is swadhisthana chakra it is associated with the prostatic plexus the lumbar region the sex urge the procreative drive the pleasure principle residing in this chakra extends to pleasure generally so this is the center for pleasurable addiction to food and drugs and material comfort mind sits there in this second chakra one is mooladhara and next is swadhisthana the third one is manipura it is concerned with ego with one's opinion of oneself it is concerned with will power and ambition in most people these first three chakras muladhara swadhisthana and manipura 
they function together if one is strong all three tend to be strong if one is weak all three tend to be weak energy the power moves freely between them <clears throat> back and forth nature has supplied these as our basic equipment and the forces associated with them are of this basic nature the gland associated with manipura is the pancreas it also rules the solar plexus and the epigastric plexus manipura regulates digestion and physical well-being and gives physical strength this manipura center is located in the region of the navel now these three centers are located one is muladhara the lowest centers i am referring to the next one is swadhisthana the third one is manipura all these three chakras all these three chakras these three centers are located below our waist so mind is always sitting in these three centers running back and forth it is it is dissipating all its energy all its activities are centered around these three centers it doesn't know how to raise up as long as the mind is just running back and forth these three centers there is no way to escape from the world there is no way to freedom that means mind travels up and down among us these centers only namely food sleep and sexual pleasure that's all these three food sleep and sexual pleasure these are the main activities associated with these three centers so you can imagine how the mind is completely drowned completely in this mess it doesn't generally like to rise above these planes at all if the mind is made to rise to the plane of the heart then one gets the vision of light that is why all the spiritual masters generally recommend to concentrate on the heart center where to stabilize it then you will be able to see the light one sees light when the mind rises to the throat plane also what is called vishuddha chakra it is not any gross light it is a light of knowledge we must aspire for that knowledge then only then only we can have spiritual prosperity otherwise we will be always in the poverty poor condition anahata is the heart center it is also associated with thymus gland and the cardiac plexus when we ascend to this chakra this center we move into a more spiritual realm with corresponding emotions the uppermost emotion here is that of love or compassion for all beings if a man is tender and affectionate we immediately say oh how fine his heart is that's the beauty of that the energy residing in the three lower chakras which i mentioned earlier 
can be sublimated in the fourth. That is, by bringing the mind and making sit at the heart center. To make it sit at the heart center is the spiritual discipline. The moment you are trying to make it sit, it runs away. It slips down. Goes to the bottom, muladhara. Or it may run to swadhisthana. Or it may want to enjoy some things. Come to Manipur. Just you are able to hold on the mind in the heart center, immediately it slips down. So that means we require more rigorous discipline to keep the mind in proper position. When we are able to detach the mind from the material things, we will see the effulgent light of God. It is very sweet and soothing, representing joy and peace and enlightenment. Beyond this universe lies that ocean of divine light. Sri Ramakrishna had that vision when he wanted to know who this Vivekananda is in his previous birth. He wanted to know about it because whenever Vivekananda came to him, he was so reacting. He wanted to just find out exactly who is this person. So he concentrated for a while because his mind was so pure, it rose to the highest level. It, it went beyond the universe. He, Swamiji himself, Sri Ramakrishna himself tells that my mind soared high, went towards all the lokas, different planets. It transcended the planets. Then he experienced the perceived the divine light. Anyway, the story goes there after. Now the point is. It is through the grace of the great spiritual masters that we find our way to that divine light. How to recognize that grace? When we get initiation from the Guru, when we are inspired to take up spiritual life, when we get interest in the spiritual sadhanas, they are all indications of the grace of the spiritual masters. They help us to rise from the lower planes to the higher plane. Thus we get the inspiration to cross the seas of the material world and move into the ocean of divine light. Sri Ramakrishna said, he is pointedly telling, meditate on this portrait of mine, referring to himself, Sri Ramakrishna is telling about. You will have so many visions of light. Sri Ramakrishna is telling, how fortunate we are we have got spiritual master right in front of us. Why should we feel that we are poor? So that's all about lighting the lamp. The house must be well lighted. Every house, every body is a house of God. It must be well lighted. Spiritual lamp must be lighted properly. Try to keep the mind on the heart center always. 
be watchful so that it may not slip down to lower centers and indulge itself in unpleasant things that's the first important point which sri ramakrishna has said the second point he is telling is that do your duty to the world after knowing god with one hand hold on to lotus feet of the lord and with the other do your work doing the work is all right he doesn't say stop the work no sri ramakrishna used to tell a parable about the maid servant in a rich man's house she does all the job of the home as if the home belongs to her she fondles the child she brings up uh, the man of the man's children as if they were her own but in the heart of hearts she knows that none of this belong to her in the same way we have to live in this world and do our duties but in our heart of hearts we must realize that nothing belongs to us our only true abode is at the lotus feet of the lord and that is where we must go in favorable or in adverse circumstances we must feel that we have none but him and that we are serving him through the faithful discharge of our allotted duties we are in this world that means we are having some duties perfectly all right but we must be aware of the truth the lord's name is the only truth everything else is unreal to have faith in him to be devoted to him to praise his glories these are the duties in life how many of us are considering these as duties our conception of duty is entirely different we think what we do whatever we do is duty no we must have clear conception about the value of duties as you have worldly duties you have spiritual duties also if you don't recognize it that means you are not ready to have the spiritual peace no matter how busy you may be in carrying out your duties you must practice regular japa and meditation regular is very important you may attend to 100 duties or earn 1 million dollars but no in our heart of hearts that all these are impermanent and some day will have to be left behind the one abiding reality is god so shri ramakrishna is warning doing the duties remembering god has immense spiritual benefit without that it is simply a waste and leads you to utter frustration that's the truth which shri ramakrishna has pointed out to us let us try to dwell upon these two main ideas which i have spoken now and move onwards in our spiritual path page 326 shri ramakrishna is telling surrender yourself to god and you will achieve everything 
This is the stoutest hedge of all, for death himself cannot come near it. Yes, it is a strong hedge indeed. If you but realize God, you won't see the world as unsubstantial. He who has realized God knows that God himself has become the world and all living beings. When you feel, when you feed your child, you should feel that you are feeding God. You should look on your father and mother as veritable manifestations of God and the Divine Mother and serve them as such. Here Sri Ramakrishna is presenting ideal. That means how important it is to note the family values. Everything has got a value in the creation. If a man enters the world after realizing God, he does not generally keep up physical relations with his wife. Both of them are devotees. They love to talk only of God and pass their time in spiritual conversation. They serve other devotees of God, for they know that God alone has become all living beings, and knowing this, they devote their lives to the service of others. Then the neighbor asked a question, But sir, such a husband and wife are not to be found anywhere. Sri Ramakrishna said, Yes, they can be found, though they may be very rare. Worldly people cannot recognize them. In order to lead such a life, both husband and wife must be spiritual. It is possible to lead such a life if both of them have tasted the bliss of God. God's special grace is necessary to create such a couple. Otherwise, there will always be misunderstanding between them. In that case, the one has to leave the other. Life becomes very miserable if husband and wife do not agree. The wife will say to her husband day and night, Why did my father marry me to such a person? I can't get enough to eat or feed my children. I haven't clothes enough to cover my body or to give my children. I haven't received a single paise of jewelry from you. How happy you have made me. Oh, you keep your eyes closed and mutter the name of God. Now do give up all these crazy ideas. Devotee said, There are such obstacles. Certainly, besides the children may be disobedient. There is no end of difficulties. Now sir, what is the way? Sri Ramakta answered, It is extremely difficult to practice spiritual discipline and at the same time lead a householder's life. There are many handicaps, disease, grief, poverty, misunderstanding with one's husband and wife, and disobedient, stupid and stubborn children. I don't have to give you a list of them, but still there is a way out. One should pray to God, going now and then into solitude and make efforts to realize Him. Then the neighbor asked a question, Must one leave home then? Sri Ramakrishna answered, No, not altogether. Whenever you have leisure, go into solitude for a day or two. At that time don't have any relations with the outside world and don't hold any conversation with worldly people and worldly affairs. You must live either in solitude or in the company of holy people. Neighbor asked a question, How can one recognize a holy man? Sri Ramakrishna answered, He who has surrendered his body, mind and innermost self to God is, a, is surely a holy man. He who has renounced lust and gold is surely a holy man. He is a holy man who doesn't regard woman with the eyes of a worldly person. He never forgets to look upon a woman as his mother and to offer her his worship if he happens to be near her. 
the holy man constantly thinks of God and does not indulge in any talk except about spiritual things. Furthermore, he serves all beings knowing that God resides in everybody's heart. These in general are the signs of a holy man. The neighbor asked a question, Must one always live in solitude? Sri Ramakrishna said, Haven't you seen the trees on the footpath along a street? They are fenced around as long as they are very young. Otherwise cattle destroy them. But there is no longer any need of fences when their trunks grow thick and strong. Then they won't break even if an elephant is tied to them. Just so, there will be no need for you to worry and fear if you make your mind as strong as a thick tree trunk. First of all, try to acquire discrimination. Break the jackfruit open only after you have rubbed your hands with the with oil. Then its sticky milk won't smear them. Neighbor asked, what is discrimination? Discrimination is the reasoning by which one knows that God alone is real and all else is unreal. Real means eternal and unreal means impermanent. He who has acquired discrimination knows that God is the only substance and all else is non-existent. With the awakening of this spirit of discrimination, a man wants to know God. On the contrary, if a man loves the unreal, such things as creature comforts, name, fame and wealth, then he doesn't want to know God, who is of the very nature of reality. Through discrimination between the real and the unreal, one seeks to know God. Listen to your song. Come, let us go for a walk, O mine, to Kali, the wish-fulfilling tree. And there beneath it gather the four fruits of life, of your two wives, dispassion and worldliness. Bring along dispassion only on your way to the tree and ask her son discrimination about the truth. By turning the mind within oneself, one acquires discrimination and through discrimination one thinks of truth. Then the mind feels the desire to go for a walk to Kali, the wishful fulfilling tree, Reaching the tree, that is to say, going near to God, you can, without any effort, gather four fruits, namely, Dharma, Kama and Moksha. Yes, after realizing God, one can also get, if one so desires, Dharma, and Kama, which are necessary for leading the worldly life. We shall stop here. There are seven chakras. One is Muladhara. Second is uh, Swadhisthana, third is Manipura, fourth is Anahata, heart, fifth is Vishuddha, that is throat, sixth is Agnya, between the eyebrows, seventh is the Sahasrara, thousand petal center at the brain. So all these centers are situated in the spinal column. The spiritual power is in every one of us, we have to harness it. Since we are not giving any attention to that, as I told you earlier, the mind is simply wandering in three lower centers, just in always engaging oneself in eating, drinking, sleeping. That's all, nothing else. And no taste for God. So we are spiritually poor, there is no prosperity in us. Unless you light the spiritual lamp, how can you have the spiritual prosperity? That's why Sri Ramakrishna said, light the lamp well. It must be lighted, it must be well lighted. So we should aspire for spiritual life, wherever we are, whatever walk of life we may be doing. We should start immediately and do something. Then it will be easy. Now all these things, that is why Sri Ramakrishna has said to develop the love of God 
you have to follow certain disciplines once you develop the love of god then it becomes very easy how to do that to become associated with spiritual persons holy association by constantly in touch with them and reading of the holy texts and trying to analyze the facts by that way you would be able to develop the love of god love of god comes only when you light the spiritual lamp now it is completely dark so we must somehow bring the light that's the point that means you must, the thought level you must not allow the uh, mind to think in a way it was doing before that means you must introduce fresh thinking by some method you must be able to think about the spiritual ideas about the impermanence of this world which we see so when you think about these ideas that thinking is initiated in the mind to that extent mind is lifted from going downwards but if you stop thinking for any reason again it slips down it slips down with uh, great velocity <laughs> instead of slipping down to manipur it goes straight to the muladhar so that is the, that is constantly you must be reading this spiritual texts and constantly you must be remembering the divine power and constantly you must be praying and worshiping these are all various methods and doing prayers all these things keep the mind in that plane but because we are not doing regularly it slips down but if you do it reg- repeated efforts that is called pratyahara in yoga shastra there is a particular word called pratyahara that is mind runs down as soon as you see the mind running down immediately catch it and bring it back that is called pratyahara it may take long time to make the mind behave it depends upon how our mind is reacting to us that's the important point how do you perceive but you have to tell in such a way in your heart of heart you are doing that out of your love towards the child only you are not doing it with any kind of hatred because you know very well that the child belongs to you and it's your concern to see the child develops his character properly you are trying to correct the child and it's our duty in a way not simply close to close the eyes whatever the child does let him do that will be negligence on our part but at the same time we should be careful in dealing with the child that means you must know you must have a little knowledge of child psychology and you must show love in different ways and love is your attraction love is your force you can conquer anybody through love is a powerful weapon i should say but you must know how to apply it nicely that technique you must know the technique is very important and sometimes you must allow the child to go in its own way but sometimes you have to tell him properly the constantly telling by constantly watching over it learns it learns 
when we are learning when we are at the learning stage we make mistakes true mistakes are not ruled out mistakes are not ruled out but they are meant for getting us education we learn many things through mistakes we learn through mistakes that's the way how we should look at it as i said we must be intelligent and we must know the technique of handling the children properly that's very important or we must uh, uh, take the counsel of some people who can handle such cases in a nice way that's the thing suppose you don't know somebody else may know how to do it in fact we have seen in in uh, of course in india in indian context i'm talking usually our uh, parents they would say they would, they would put the children under the guidance of a teacher and the children would stay on with the in the teacher's home and uh, his whole uh, attention was uh, diverted to studies and uh, learning and uh, is always under the guidance under the instructions of the teacher so there is no diversion for him so like that he would improve but if he were uh, staying in the home he would not have learnt to that extent he would not have formed the character in the way it should be but over the period of time all those traditions are given goodbye <laughs> now the people call gurukula ashram people now also they use this same words they use but methods are different and it has become chronic what shall we do it has become a chronic it is global india is no exception so loss is a great loss that is the danger of utter materialism utter materialism so if the mind is given free hand to go that way this is the result what we are seeing today nobody can control anybody there is a state of affairs now that is that is because of uh, ambitions because of ego because of so many factors there are so many factors responsible for such things of course desire is the root of everything there is no doubt about it desire is the root of everything but as long as the mind is uh, in that level it is always tossed between this fear and anger and passion all these things so that is why people are not happy but if the mind is at the heart center the always mind thinks of the higher things higher values then it no more runs into such emotions then it is able to uh, then you will be able to maintain your tranquility samabhav equanimity that is only that simply simply a philosophical uh, satisfaction that's all that will not help us but if you come to practical aspect of it then uh, you can't simply when you know certain things are not to be done you must reject them and uh, there's no point in telling uh, mind runs after enjoyment and uh, it cannot be stopped no it is not like that time will come when you become disgusted with enjoyment but that time is too hard to bear it is a painful retreat very painful yeah. but everybody has to make a retreat in one time or other <laughs> eh? how long you grow up in the dark at one point of time you want to come to light enough of darkness i want light yes pair for it i can understand 10 hours 11 hours night is wonderful but if the night continues you become sad what is this uh, i want light rain is good but if rain continuously comes then you become it becomes very unpleasant uh, what is this all the time raining you criticize the rain see in our uh, in our uh, homes we used to whenever the whenever there is any indication that rain comes we will all criticize oh rain is coming then our elders would say don't criticize the rain don't criticize it is because of rain we are living if the rain doesn't come where is your food part to play 
But if it exceeds the limit, then it loses its value. Same way. They don't, uh, they don't ask you to give up enjoyment altogether, but have a controlled enjoyment. That is very difficult. Giving up is easy, rather than to have control. Eh? Is it not? The person himself has to judge. How to know means, for example, I am eating. I would like to have one more rasgulla, sweet. But I said, no. Enough. One I have taken, it's enough. That's control. Though I would like to take one more, I won't take. That's the point. It's difficult. Sometimes you you tempted to take. No, no, let me. Doesn't matter. We can take two. That doesn't matter. Attitude comes finished. Don't have. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Attitude. Always be watchful about the things going on, about your life, about everything, and take necessary steps. As in when you find, if you find anything going wrong, take immediate steps to rectify it. It's easy to rectify in the early stages than doing it in the long run. It will be very difficult afterwards. You can't you will not be able to do anything. Chant the name of the Lord and his glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench with the mighty forest fire, worldly lust, raging furiously within. O name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself. O self, drown deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name that bath for weary souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my assuredness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O oh, my might, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O oh, Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust or the toys of fame, as many times as they may be reborn, grant me, O oh, Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet. O oh, how I long for the day when an instant's separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years. When my heart burns away with his desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion. Neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou who steals the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good betide all people, May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works, be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.